The great thaw is among us, my friends. We have entered into the season known as spring breakup. So it takes a few weeks for our snow to actually melt and break up, so to speak. And it's also um, known as a kind of an unattractive season around here. So you'll get these like little spots showing up. Anything dark will just melt first and then it'll just kind of take place around there and the snow will shrink back. Rivers and lakes are gonna be opening up and losing their ice. We have been staying super busy with like seasonal chores around here. We just got back uh, from the Kenai with our future greenhouse. And we've been doing a little bit of snow clearing around here. That's the beauty of a tractor. If you want snow to be gone, you can just hop on it and move it. So I did some clearing over there the other day where our generator is. Eric has almost officially had to be running our generator like an entire year to power our house. We're very thrilled to get our solar set up this year now that we have the shop enclosed and we're gonna be heating it this winter. We also cleared a little spot behind me for this cool little structure that we have. And this is a makeshift, um, like high tunnel or not high tunnel just a little uh, tunnel or greenhouse you could call it and you can tell that it's a lot warmer in there there's some condensation on the plastic this is just some old plastic that we had from our old greenhouse it didn't take very long to throw that together we used some scrap wood it's doing an amazing job already there's no plants there right now we have to move them um, i think it's about noon so we wait till about this time when the sun comes up over the cabin and it kind of heats this area up for our plants so we are working on hardening off our plants in here not only am i out of space inside but we have to get those plants ready for the real world so i have to put them through like a series of hardening off um, indoors is warm there's no real nature elements out here they get a little more exposed to some cold the intensity of the sun and eventually they will be ready to actually be outside in this air out here we're gonna get them moved over first thing and then we've got a few other things that we're working on today Four outside, 36. I forgot what it was. Just hit above freezing. Close to 50 in there, 40 something. Too. What's that called? It's all steamy. Nice. We only have to pick new ones this year. Hey, Eric! Well, it's getting to the point where we're gonna have to start plugging in the freezer. Winter is awesome in that aspect because everything can just go outside. And that's pretty much where all of our stuff is right now. So we've got ice chests full of like our meat and things like that. And the freezer, well, I've heard things about not wanting to leave your freezer outside and let it freeze. We've been doing it with this freezer for almost five years and it hasn't been an issue for us. So we're gonna keep doing that. But like I said, it's time to plug it in. So we're gonna take the opportunity today to clean it out. I don't know if we've ever done like a real deep thaw and cleaning on it, but we're gonna do it today. It should warm up to like close to 50 degrees today, but we're gonna speed things up and we're gonna take the diesel heater. We're gonna crank it on level six. We're gonna run the ducting into the freezer. We've got it upside down, hopefully, the hot air that rises will get trapped in there. It will thaw it out and we'll be able to get it plugged in and uh, start running our freezer again. See how low it drops? Because that's because it's heating the glow plug. It takes a lot of energy from that battery. Okay. We've got the tractor warming up and we're gonna throw the snow plow on it and we're gonna do a little bit of snow removal today. So if you remove the snow from an area the ground wherever you move the snow is going to thaw out a lot quicker and you can actually work with the ground and back behind me we have already marked out the perimeter of where the garden is going to go so we've got a couple big projects this year we have the shop which we've already been working on and we plan to finish it this year and we also plan to put in a garden including fencing high tunnel beds soil 
all of it and growing food. So we've got big plans this year. We kind of walked our lines. It's about 100 by 80 or 110 by 80 and we put some stakes in the corners. We took down a few trees that were in our way and we also burned some of the brush. I just did that the other day. I tried to burn all the brush when I cut down the trees, but it was negative 58 that day and everything was just cold and I guess it had time to dry out. So it burned pretty good right now. There is still some stumps out there. So I'm gonna have to watch those with the snow plow. I don't think we'll be able to dig those up quite yet. So we're gonna try to push the snow, the whole perimeter that we marked out, plus a little bit more, give us a little more wiggle room. Let's head on in there. It's already melting. Go outside. I already had to change my outfit. It was getting too hot out here. I'm gonna go look for the trail cameras that we put out a little while ago while Eric's working, but I'm having a little bit of uh, trouble off-roading. Off-roading out here, so I'm not taking the camera with me. I got them! I can't believe it. It was way deeper back there than I was expecting and there was like no tracks. Um, from when we first went back there and set these and it just looks it looks a little bit different my recollection wasn't quite spot on so pretty awesome we're gonna get to look at these and i think it's about time to clean out that freezer Well, we're all done over at the garden site and the uh, Branson made pretty short work of that. I think I put two hours on the tractor and I burned a little less than half a tank of fuel and it was like actively melting over there as I was plowing it out of the way. So I'm pretty confident within like a day or two, that's all gonna be bare ground out there for us. And last night, Ariel made us a dessert and it had to freeze, but it was too warm out last night. It was like 40 degrees. so. It froze and we're gonna enjoy it for lunch today. And then I think we're gonna get the freezer brought up on the deck, get it plugged in, get it cooling down, and we're gonna bring a bunch of meat and scraps to the chicken coop. First bite. Mm. Doesn't that give you ice cream bites? That's good. Mm. So it looks like all clean. All right, let's see if it turns on. Ready? Ready. Oh, that's 
goodness. Yeah, it's on. Okay, I'll put her on as cold as she can go. If you don't have chickens, they are really fun to sit and watch. And if you do have them, you probably know what I'm talking about. And this is the coolest thing about having livestock and the dogs over the past few years. Um, we just like do not throw away anything food related at all. It either goes to the chickens, the dogs, or gets composted. And today they have salmon carcasses, I'm sorry, fish carcasses, salmon pike, and some moose scraps. Like firm. You know, you know what I mean? How they get that blue? They get like they're because they get exposed to the cold. Yeah. It looks great out here. Super clean. We are thrilled to have the freezer organized. It's still completely full, so thankfully we got lucky and we we're able to cram it in there. The plants did awesome out here again today. That's their second day that they've been outside. I'll show you what it looks like in there. And we got some actual like containers. They're down underneath here. You probably can't see them, but it's a lot of stuff in here. And probably 30% is our dog food. Um, the way we feed Bandit just occupies a lot of volume. This is my least favorite thing about living in Alaska in the summer. It's not mosquitoes. Um, it's, it's the fact that we have to plug in our freezer because I do really like being able to just throw something outside in the winter months. We had a whole bunch of our ice chests out here. Um, you know, it's covered with snow and now we cleaned them out and the deck is free again. So it's really pretty. Happy with what we accomplished today and I'm pretty excited to see the garden area melt over the next few days. It's just past 11 and we have moved our plants out for the day. It's above 40 degrees so they should be fine in the little high tunnel. And this is our seed rack. We have to move some of these out as well. They're getting big enough and I think they can tolerate the cooler temperatures out there. We've already shown this, but I just wanted to give like a little update on it. These are new lights and they are working fantastic. I can't complain about them at all. And the east facing window is working out pretty well for us as well. No complaints about the soil we're using this year. In fact, I'm, I'm really happy with it. Everything's really green and looking good. Uh, but I'll just kind of fill you in on what we've been doing. So I continually start seeds and I try to transplant them up as they get a little bit bigger or if I sow like multiple seeds in one pod and several of them sprout. This is a good example. These are some thyme plants and there's a few of them in each pod. So at this point you can just actually take apart the root ball and separate them if you want that many plants or you can take like a little pair of scissors and you can actually like just snip them. So say like, I don't want that one. I don't want these two next to the big guy. And I just, I just compost those little guys. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want the plants to get as big as they can before they get planted into the ground. So it makes sense to just have one plant per pod. Right here is pretty much all, not all, but it is a lot of herbs. There's a few flowers up here. It is more herbs. I'm an herb nut. There's a lot of them. And uh, we've got some other things sprouting flowers. I'm not really sure we're gonna have room for those this year, but I couldn't really bear the idea of not planting any flowers, so I did plant some. And as we work our way down, it's more flowers and herbs. Um, we have some microgreens starting again. Uh, we ate through those other ones pretty quickly. 
All right, I think we let them go a little bit longer to the baby green phase, but these are just starting. And I have some artichoke. And on this last shelf, I have things that I want to go outside. So I kind of keep the stuff that's germinating up top because it's warmer that way. And then the lights are set up at a higher, they're set up higher here so I can have bigger plants basically. So these plants are pretty big and we don't want the light right down on them. And I'm still using cups to do some of our um, planting up. I don't know why, but I find they work really well. I've had these for years. This is a clear one. I really like the clear because you can see the roots and it just lets you monitor the progress. It also lets you tell if they need water or not. And another way to tell if a plant needs water is just by like lifting up the pot. So these are pretty heavy because I just watered them yesterday but something like this right here is really light. It needs water. Eric came up with the idea to kind of thin out the celery a little bit more than usual. So this one right here has, I think it has six or seven little guys in there. I'm gonna probably snip one of those cause it's a little bit small. And the idea is this is gonna help them get bigger when we transplant them, but also be easier to sort through because celery is like notorious for having these little tangly roots and they're really hard to separate when you go to plant them in the garden. But these guys are ready to go outside and we're going to give these leeks, a trim. I'm gonna show you how I do that. They just get a trim as they need it because they're really long right now. I usually do that several times before they make it out to the garden and they're gonna be going outside and then we are rendering some fat today. Okay, this is uh, inside the makeshift high tunnel. It is 37 outside and it looks like it's 51 in here. So that's awesome. These plants like cooler temperatures. They're not really a big fan of the 70 and 80, especially in their early growth. Um, so we have the herbs out here. We've got onions, leeks, and a bunch of Brussels sprouts and cabbage, so brassicas. Nothing can spend the night out yet. They're not hardened off enough and we are still getting cold. I think I saw it's supposed to be like eight degrees coming up, so it's just way too cold for these plants specifically because they haven't been um, germinated outside and onions too don't really tolerate that cold of temperatures. Everything out here has been doing fantastic though and the black bins we have to angle them up to make sure they get enough sun whereas the clear totes you can tell sun would just like come right into them so we don't have to worry about it. So we're gonna head back inside. up really fast, you know what I mean? Compared to me. Yeah, it's so soft. We're about to add the last of the fat. We are rendering it down low and slow and just keeping it like barely under a simmer, just a little bit of foam on top. And that's just indicative that the water is evaporating off of or out of the fat. So we can go ahead and jar it up and store it. Eric's doing a little bit of work outside on the sawmill and I am going to be making the dough for donuts later. We figured that would be super appropriate since we have the lard to fry it in and we have some berries that we found in the freezer, some lingonberries and blueberries that we wanna use.
How was like? Did you get it going? Good. What's that? You got it going? Yeah, somehow the blade was like out of adjustment and kept falling off, so I got it adjust. So I think it's working. Very nice. Well, our dough has been sitting outside for about an hour. It looks really nice. And we're going to get it rolled out and I'm going to be cutting some circles out of it so we can stuff it a little bit later. It has to um, go through like a second period where it relaxes. I'm probably just going to throw it back outside because it's pretty much refrigerator temperatures out there right now. As I was rolling this out, I'm not sure what possessed me, but I um, felt the need to make a very large donut. So we're gonna try that and see how that goes. We're gonna get started on the filling in the meantime. And what I'm going to do is move over some of the fat that is still melting and technically speaking, like the cracklings from the lard. I'm gonna move them over from the big Dutch oven that I have going into a smaller one and that's gonna help that other one get processed a little faster, but it's also going to give us fat that we need for frying these babies up. Well, it's just after 8 p.m. and we sadly do not have any donuts. Um, I'm pretty sure I killed the yeast earlier with my mixture. Um, they're really flat, but they're warm, so they're not they're not rising like they should. And over here, we've tried two now. Yeah, we basically have like a fried biscuit, and that's not what we want. We're not going to be able to stuff them. So I'm going to have to redo this in the morning. That's okay. It's been a long time since I've killed yeast like that. And the fat is taking a really long time. I'm assuming it's because of the volume that we're doing. We're doing about 15 pounds. I'm going to strain it, finish straining it tonight, and then tomorrow I will be jarring it. I decide. <laughs> really open it up. I wonder if I do. It seems like it's getting. Oh my gosh! It seemed like it was getting full with berries. That yeah, would, uh... the berry like. Here, do me a favor. Stab the berries back into it. Round two for donuts. And they actually worked. I didn't kill the yeast today when I remade the um, the dough, not batter. And we finished off our fat this morning. We strained it last night. And then this morning I just made sure there was no more water or impurities in it. And it looks beautiful. I can't think of anything prettier than a jar of fat. So we have got 11 of them and we have the extra that we fried the donuts in. And we did end up with a total slew of cracklings. And I'm not going to use them this time because we have chickens and I just can't, I just don't feel the need to use them. We have a whole bunch of them and um, they're crispy little parts of the fat that didn't 
render down or meat, kind of like a, what is that called? Fried pork skin, if you've ever had that. So the chickens will appreciate this. We're going to try our donuts. You can probably tell these weren't super easy to stuff. Um, we've done this before and it's, it's really not that easy. I think you need the right tool. Nonetheless, it turned out pretty good. And the filling is blueberries, lingonberries, and some spruce tip syrup that we made close to a year ago. So it's a little spruce tips with uh, sugar. Brown sugar? I think I used brown sugar for this one. We used, we did both. So this one was brown sugar though, hon. Oh, and the spruce tip syrup? Yeah. Brown sugar, yes. But for this exact recipe. And then we added some cornstarch. That's it? That's all you added? Yes. Okay. These are delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they would not be. Mm. Yeah, they're really good. I like the cinnamon sugar. I do like the cinnamon sugar. A donut should be sugary and sweet, right? The crust turned out really good. It didn't take, they did not take long to cook. No? Is this considered a crust? What do you call the coating? What do you call a, a crust? I would think so. Doesn't matter how. I guess it's a crust. The crust of a donut. It's crispy. It's no, really good. What would you good. call it? The crust of a pancake. I'm nope. going with the crust. Yeah, I don't know what I know. I what would you call it though? <laughs> Man, that's like that. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a decent donut fan. I mean, I can't say it's like my top 50 foods. Man. Yeah, it's so good. With the berries? Fantastic. See, I'm, I like the stuffing. I'm over here dipping mine in the sugar. You never, if you would have told me that there's a berry I like just as much as the Alaskan blueberry. Yeah, I know. It's... I wouldn't have believed you. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> Believe that. <laughs> oh, these are good. <laughs> I love that movie so much. Dang, babe, this is good. Look little monsters in her. You want to see how many we can eat? Should we say anything else? Like, uh, we recommend these? Maybe I can say something like, I highly recommend these. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna actually say that with a straight face? <laughs>